I have this normal 2.4 year experience. Okay. That that include the six month of internship also. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like so, uh, how much comfortable you are, you are in Java? If you have to rate yourself out of five, how much you will rate? Out of out of five. Okay. So three. Mm. Three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll start with core Java with easy question. Yeah. Can you tell me what is a wrapper class? A uh, wrapper class is the means this this special function uh, Java. Okay, they give means to convert your uh, primitive data type to a uh, object. Okay, hmm. so when you uh, hello yeah yeah listening yeah you convert a object. Okay, wrapper classes means there is a uh, integer wrapper classes like integer so int. Okay, and uh, uh, you know the java is not a pure, uh, pure object oriented language so to means uh, to achieve that uh, pure object oriented language so a wrapper class is into into this thing, java okay. so that convert your uh, primitive to your uh, uh, object uh, object okay. Like yeah okay okay fine so can you tell me the difference between equals method and uh, double equal operator yeah okay a uh, double equal operator uh, means compare your reference object reference mm -hmm. and uh, equal uh, equal method compare your content of the uh, uh, content of the your stream or it is okay yeah okay so suppose uh, you have to call a constructor from another constructor uh, can you tell mm -hmm. me how you will do that constructor from another constructor okay yeah uh why isn't creating object? Uh, you can call yeah, me. you can create an object uh, as but, well. But uh, you are you 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 super also use if you call the yes. another class so as a constructor. Uh, super will call the super class constructor. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and if you have to do it uh, in the same class, then you can use this keyword. Yeah, this keyword yeah. for them is create a current instance of classes like this. Yeah. Means that, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, can you tell me the differences between abstract class and interface? Mm, abstract class and interface. Okay. So, firstly, the interface means uh, uh, if if you uh, don't know the uh, all thing of your what the uh, implementation. Okay. Mm. So, use the interface. You need only need the concept. Okay. And if in the abstract class, if you need partial information or uh, uh, not to totally so use the abstract class okay uh, in a in an interface uh, you can means uh, you cannot uh, create constructor okay or instance block okay, or static block in a uh, interface you can create that okay, okay. and uh, yeah in, in an interface you co you cannot means uh, assign uh, assign means uh, create a variable like a stat uh, volatile or private okay you uh, know your your abstract class you can do that mm -hmm. and uh, one thing also uh, in an interface uh, your method is also means uh, the, all the method are the public in uh, your interface in abstract class maybe the method also public and uh, also means they also with the concurrent okay so other other uh, type of mm. uh, okay uh, yeah this uh, can we have multiple inheritance in no Java? no multiple in it is not no, due to some I means uh, ambiguity or diamond problem like that okay okay yeah. uh, is there any way to achieve uh, multiple inheritance in any by using uh, interface interface you yeah, can yeah, use interface. the help of interface yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know something about java 8 and how they implemented interfaces yeah, in yeah, java 8 yeah I, yeah i know the java yeah 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 please tell mm. me what uh, can you check uh, yeah, interfaces in terms of Java. So, what are the new things they added in the interfaces? Oh, uh, in the interfaces, they introduced the Java means the functional interface. Mm. Okay. Functional yeah. interface. Yeah. Yeah. Interface, functional interface. And uh, I'm not users, but uh, I hear that key they also means you can define your uh, method body in also in the interface. Mm. Like, okay. Apart from that, yeah. Apart from that, not uh, so 
apart from that i don't know yes yeah, they know. have added yeah. default method also in interface yes uh, default method is there so you can use that okay okay and multiple yeah. Uh, uh, like multiple default methods can be there in the interface and static method also you can have static method also in in interfaces yeah okay okay static method yeah yes yeah. okay so uh, what is a byte code in java what do you understand by by uh, byte code byte code yeah Byte code means uh, after assign means uh, after running the dot class file, right? You can tell. Yeah, dot class dot file. Dot class file. No. Uh, no. Uh -huh. Like when you have dot Java file by Java okay. C compiler, I mean uh, command, it will be com uh, it will be converted into dot class file, and class that file. dot okay. class file will have byte codes. Byte yes, codes yes. are like uh, instructions. That dot yes, byte codes are that yeah, uh, yeah that write in assemble language. Yeah, so uh, that dot class file have those instruction to run our program. Yes, yes, that is that is all the instruction in assembly language. So that uh, your when you uh, when you give the someone okay that byte file that JVM is convert uh, yeah run it in uh, their language. So. So that uh, means so that called the JVM is a or uh, sorry uh, Java Java is a independent language. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what do you understand by a protected access modifier? So where exactly you can use if suppose one method is protected. So okay. From where, like, what is the scope of that? I want to understand. Uh, if it's a protected method, then you can use in means uh, when if, if there is protected, the only the subclass they use that protected method. Okay, hmm. so means only subclass that is uh, or the uh, package contain that uh, they they use that protected method. Yeah, subclass. Yeah, subclass. I mean the uh, the parent if if the parent class has the protected method, then the hmm. subclass they use that method. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and what about uh, same package but not subclass? What about same class is not subclass? Yeah, you can use in that also, same package. Okay, okay. So can you tell me the differences between checked and un unchecked exception? Yeah, check and uncheck exception. Yeah. Uh, means that uh, check. Uh, you can say check exception is means uh. Check exception is uh, you can call it means uh, that check by your compiler. Okay, hmm. check by your compiler. And this like a class not found exception or IO exception and a uh, one check exception exception happen at a runtime. Yeah. Okay, so like arithmetic exception. So uh, but the check exception means uh, if you if you write there is a one exception like it's a IO exception or a uh, class not found exception. So when you run the, your program, so that show in your uh, uh, compile time okay he, there's a class not found exception like that okay so this is your uh, compiled uh, that is checked by your compiler not a compile yeah. time just check by your compiler Correct. and uh, yeah uncheck exception means uh, when you uh, when you uh, means you, you run the program okay you type some input or other thing okay or uh, you process your uh, input so that time that happened that is called a uncheck exception yeah usually. okay so whenever you are running any program and uh, in compilation time if you get that exception uh, that will be checked exception check exception and on yeah. the runtime if you are getting that exception it is runtime ex ex exception yeah yes yes so these null pointer exception or number number format exception or uh, error index out of bound exception yeah. you won't get any any red line if you are using eclipse you won't get any okay. red line uh, in your code if you if we if your program is throwing uh, these type kind of exception after okay. after executing your program after compiling and then executing your program then you will get these kind of exceptions yes so eventually you are getting them in runtime not in compile time 
Yes, yes. Arithmetic exception and all the things which are yeah. out of bound, null pointer exception that happen in your yeah. runtime. Yeah, so suppose if you have 2 divided by 0 in your code, uh, you won't get yeah. any red line or any compilation error in that. But when you yes, run it, yes. you will get runtime exception for that. Yeah, uh, uh, like the one arithmetic exception one 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 upon zero like that. Mm -hmm. This is a, you can say this is a check exception. Or uh, means that is uh, this is a your means what you call that. Uh, because uh, you will see in your compiler that showing your this is a error. Okay. Yeah. If you use your uh, Eclipse or other thing, and one thing also if you run the program mm -hmm. with, like that, they also showing you the um, some other. Uh, 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 ID not giving that type of uh, error in uh, in your right uh, at time of writing code. So they also this uh, means they showing in the compile time. So arithmetic exception is you can say your check or uncheck exception, right? Yeah. In, a, in a reference scenario, yeah. If you directly uh, type a zero at uh, of um, dividend, okay, okay, okay. yeah. Or if you pass the value from uh, user, so that they give the at runtime. Hmm. If you write that like that, they give the uh, compile time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, what is the benefit of uh, multi-threaded programming? Uh, benefit of multi-threaded programming means you the uh, you means the uh, performance is okay. Yeah. You yeah. can increase your performance of it. Yes. Like uh, they, if you if you like large code or uh, number of jobs, so that divided the job in in uh, different uh, okay? mm. in a small small part. Mm. So that is with the performance uh, testing and your code is more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Take, yeah. Not take uh, much more time. Okay? Correct. So that get deep. Yeah. Yeah, so speed will be faster. The execution yeah, yes. speed will be faster yeah. of your program or of your code uh, compared yeah. to single threaded environment. Okay. Yes. So, ca can you tell me the ways to create a thread? There are two ways. One is uh, means, uh, there is a thread class. Okay. You can mm -hmm. extend your thread class and uh, using a runnable interface. Two ways that we can do that. Okay. So, what, yeah. which, will, uh, which will be the better way? According to you, better way is uh, you can see runnable interface. One we took. Ah, uh, yeah. So implementing runnable will be better, right? Because if you yes. are implementing uh, an interface, then you have option to implement or extend another classes as well. Implementing more interfaces and extend another, another class as well. So, yeah, yes. if you extend thread class, you can create a thread by that also, but uh, you have a limitation. So, you can't yes. uh, extend one more class after that. Yeah. Because yeah. that will create problem in Java. And in, in yes. the case of uh, implementing runnable, you can extend another class as well in, in your... Yeah. If you need that in your code. Yes, this is the benefit. Yeah. There is a thing called thread scheduler. Do you know about that? Thread scheduler. Yes, I know that. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm not much willing to answer that. Okay, no problem. It's a it's a like a part of JVM which uh, which determines which uh, which thread will be run. So it will uh, schedule the threads. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it will allocate the processor time to time by priority. So higher priority thread will get first. Then then uh, after that the second priority. After that the third priority thread will get the resource. Yes. So it will it's do a concept. That job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It will do that job. It will schedule the time between threads and resources between threads. Yes, yes. That is, there's a normal schedule your job as a per priority or Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So there are uh, there is a join method in threads. Yes. So do you know about that? Yeah, I know. You said they join your uh, two thread. Once the thread is completed, once work is completed of thread, then they 
if we need to the join to the another thread then they join that so what do you understand by that joining another thread means uh, uh, yeah yep sometime it means sometime if uh, one thread is working okay so another thread is waiting for their input okay they get from the another thread like that so okay that situation also okay okay yeah so there are like uh, several there are two types of memories in java stack and heap yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. stack and heap yeah, yeah. Okay. so what is the difference between them oh stack and heap means yeah. the heap is storing your uh, if normally is storing your global variable or the thing okay stack your story local variable and uh, stack also which means to manage your method or uh, you can say that uh, your method stack okay yeah yeah you can yeah you can or if you have also means uh, uh, you can say your store global variable or uh, creating your uh, okay. yeah sorry okay. sorry no problem yeah. so uh, when you are first uh, working on java you have to set okay. the class path so where exactly you will set the class path to make in your system for every environment class path yeah so sorry so i no problem yeah. no problem so uh, we set class path in the environment variables in if suppose you are using windows systems then yeah miss uh, you said uh, that means uh, being assigned to the uh, means uh, set up a variable to the java like that yeah so why System we said variable. that we give a address so jvm will yeah. search Uh, for dot class file by using the class path specified and that uh, yeah, yeah i know that but uh, yeah, not a specific no yeah what, so what is a jar do you know what is a jar 